Yeah, let's here. go around the introductions. That's right. Go ahead. Oh, me first. KE5 HDF. I'm Ralph. I'm currently president, but only till the end of this meeting. <laughs> you didn't get the email. <laughs> okay, go ahead, right here. I'm Steven, W2WF, and uh, yeah, uh, I've got the video going, so please just a, a note, uh, don't say any flowery language because what, what happens here doesn't stay here, it goes on YouTube, so. It's being recorded. Barry, KG5IRR, uh, I'm actually class uh, licensed in 2015. Howard Klutz, KG5OIR. Ken Wenzel, KW5KEN. Mark, WB5ANN. Bobby, KI5PVT. Donald, KG5PFN. Paul, KI5KGY. Lee, NR5Q. Bob, N5RLM. Don, KI5WWD. Uh, Rick, KE5AOA. Mike, W5OFT. Steve, KI5YTT. And over Matt, uh, Alan, KB2WF. And our guest over here this, this morning. I'm Anthony, KE5GIP, Golf India Papa. All right, and we want to thank uh, Alan, who's the Transfer Volunteer. Uh, for coming out on Saturday, so appreciate it. And then, um, we want to, Rick, Rick Afray, who's been kind of in and out here, has just paid his dues, but yeah. welcome, Rick. We haven't seen him in ages. Good to see you again. So, um, just one, I don't think anybody, just one other administrative mm -hmm. thing. I don't think anybody's testing. Is anyone testing here today? No? Okay, all right, that's it. Good. So much for the flower language, indeed. All right, uh, we've got a little bit of business uh, now. On May three and four, I'm sorry, March three and four is the Greater Houston Ham Fest. They are really building it big this year, and it will be the uh, Texas State Convention for ARRL. They are working with several vendors to, to come back. I know last year they, or last time they didn't have much in the way of vendors. This time it looks like you're going to have uh, several of the major vendors back, which is good. The I have requested, but have not yet been able to confirm that we have a club table. The idea behind club tables this year is a free table for every club to advertise the club. No sales, no buying, just your literature, your banner, whatever, to advertise your club. Yes, sir. Not to interrupt, but there was an email from B. Bark that I believe came in either last night or this morning mm -hmm. about those tables. They need to be manned on Friday and Saturday, both days. If we don't show up for the Friday to man the table, they're going to give it away or do something to that effect. That's right. I forwarded that on out to the whole club. Okay. The, uh, but that's right, Friday and Saturday. And if you buy a table for yourself, to, or if we buy a table for the club to buy, sell, and trade, it will also need to be have somebody there Friday and Saturday. Uh, they uh, made a last call for technical papers yesterday as part of the email. So hopefully uh, they've got quite a few. At the, the, at the uh, Fort Bend County Fairgrounds on Highway 36, head out 59 south, exit 36, hang a left, and it's about a mile on the right. It's uh, surprisingly well marked. <laughs> now. Yeah, have it driven in the Northeast. Our road signs are great. They actually tell you where you are, what road you're on, how far to the next place up there. Uh -uh. Maybe 30 miles between highway uh, exit one and exit two. You have no idea. Okay. Oh. Uh, as far as other business, this is when we normally elect officers. There had been a couple of people who had mentioned they would like to be officers. I really cannot continue as president. I've got too much else going on. Uh, my attention has not been what it should have been this past year, and I apologize to you all for that. Uh, 
is there anybody present who would be willing to do uh, president, vice president? Mark, you said you wanted to stay as secretary and treasurer, is that right? Yeah, I'll stay as secretary and treasurer. Thank you, sir. So just president and vice president. A couple of things. One, uh, you've done a heck of a job. You've gotten, you, you've heard it, cats. It's, it's not easy, and, and you've done a great job. So. Have you seen who he had to lead? I mean, God almighty, that people. That's a rowdy crowd. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I propose that we split Mar Mark's uh, tasking. He's already doing too much, guys. He's got the VE responsibilities. He's doing the treasurer. And now he's doing the secretary. No, I say we just have him do one. Well, split I'm telling you, this we, is the we've had him split why, in the this past. Is the reason they why have been split it. in the past. Uh, that is a, uh, uh, a club body decision. The person who currently has both roles is, likes it the way it is. Uh, leave it for an, my suggestion is leave it for another year and then and then consider splitting it. Or, ha or, or let him take somebody under his wing to groom them. Yeah, so Rick, so why don't you... Can I just make a comment? What Mark is saying is absolutely correct, though. We'll leave it as it is for the time being. I understand your concern. I had that discussion with Mark myself uh, last month. Uh, so anybody here want to take on president, vice president? Uh, the roles are set the agenda, be the figurehead for an MC, find presentations for us, help coordinate activities, and they can be split between the two offices however they want to do it. Anybody present who wants to take these on? Okay, let's, let's try this another way. How many people here have been president of this club? Raise your hand. Okay, can't be any of this group. <laughs> Next. Somebody. Wasn't Barry present? I was VP. Oh, VP. Okay. Now, uh, Martin has uh, uh, Martin has uh, previously offered to be, but he's not present today. Then that's perfect. <laughs> 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 he, he can review this after the fact. It's been reported he's in the in the restroom. Yeah. Oh, good enough. Yeah, we've all been elected. Somebody's I'm, trying to speak here. Nobody's ever been elected when B here. <laughs> he, he moved back to England, so uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no. I heard yeah, him on the air the I'll other be, day. I'll be, I'll be willing to stay on where I'm at, uh, you know, doubt about the club where I can um, with my position. So, But if we want another VP to, like, take on my – website or you know more <laughs> admin duties uh we can do that as well that's what we want to do so jeremy is willing to remain on as vice president all those in favor Good. any objections we have one objection i can understand why you share it around you got to it's the same people stepping up guys we may have to have a, uh, Anthony, you want to? <laughs> He's already president one it, it, place. If, if, if somebody uh, mutinies against me and takes it over, I don't care, you know. But I'm, uh, I'm willing to step up and help out winning where I can, so. It's yours. I've got an extra pen. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm making a proposal that, yes. I made this proposal before that every club member take one net meeting that everybody, everybody in the club be net control one week and just rotate it around. I will make the same proposal about president, that uh, every month that some member take is president for that month. Oh, I've actually, uh, go ahead. Feedback on that. That becomes uh, operationally complicated. Of course, sure. and it's Because you else. start an initiative or something like that, you get your routine going. And then, by the way, that was last month, you're no longer president. So. <laughs> I think the president, these offices should be for a year. I, I respect that. I just thought I'd make it as a proposal. An interesting proposal indeed. Gets everybody involved. Everybody can put on their resume. They were president of this club. It's really kind of nice. I think that uh, as a modification of that, it may be not president, but we share in rotation the responsibility for arranging the presentation, yeah. the meeting topic. So I hear a proposal that we have a rotation among all members, one month, 
somebody different has to step up and, and uh, prepare the presentation or arrange for a presentation. Any seconds? <laughs> How can you have any seconds if you haven't had any first yet? I just yeah. made the proposal. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, yeah. yeah. I'll second my let's, let's do this a different way. Oh, oh, the so way. who will be would be willing to make a presentation or lead a meeting once a month? The same group. Oh yeah. Same group. Same group all the time. Did you Come really need that? This is not a club of six people. Guys. One month. All we want you to do Come is on. tap up and take one month. Thank you. All right. So we have um, your Don. You're Don, right? Yeah. Oh. He came in late. Name Steve. and call sign, please. Yeah, my name's Don. Oh, well, wait, let's get your name on here. Okay. Don <coughs> Mark. Mark. Benson. Oh, Mark Benson, right. Mark, what's your call? KF5JSA. Just A. Okay. All right. So Mark's willing to do one. Well, how about next? How about next month? Uh, what, you pick the month. What are we voting again? Whether whether he'll take a, a control of a of a uh, meeting or presentation. But is it? Anybody have an outline of the typical meeting? We have a short business meeting which is what we're in the middle of now, trying to. And then we have a presentation and maybe some hands-on or show and tell afterwards. But isn't that really the responsibility of the president to organize? Yeah, it is, but we're just asking him to do a pre uh, to or organize or arrange for a, a topic for presentation for next month. That's okay. all we're asking him to do. No problem if I do the presentation? No, it's all right if you do the presentation. Yeah, you don't just arrange it. You, you do it or arrange it, either one. Okay, topic of your choice. Who else? Okay, Hal. Okay, Don. I'll uh, do uh, August. Okay, Don Berger. Okay. All right. We got Hal. Uh, I can do one. Anthony's got this month. Uh, Mark, when can, well, next month, ne next month we may want to defer that because we have a scheduling conflict next month here. So oh, that's right. I've, in fact, let's talk about that. But Mark, we'll get you on, we'll get you some, get on here and, um, as far as uh, something to schedule. So we have, Jan so we have, uh, let's say March, April, May, June, and August. So we've got a few months here ahead to, to beat somebody in the head. And then for the guys that um, are reluctant, maybe we can help you along with a topic that, you know, of your, of your choice. Can you do one on soldering and short pants? Excuse me? Can you do a presentation on soldering wearing shorts? Sure. Yeah, we well, can have hands-on. I mean, this year, what would, be, what would be good? We really haven't had any hands-on uh, work here, so that the roll-up J-pole pro project was a good one that we've mm -hmm. done in the past. And that, that's doable within the uh, three or four hours that we're here. Um, and then, uh, you know, we have we have plenty of supplies and equipment for that. So that's 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 a good hands-on for us. And then, um, I can show you my scars from soldering two shorts. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, you missed a good presentation by uh, our, our fearless leader over here, in which he talked exactly about that. And yeah, we started I'll teasing him about wearing chaps. Oh, it just happened. Yeah. Oh. But yeah, you might want to talk to him about wearing chaps. It's just, that that yeah. was your solution? Yeah, I got a nice third degree burn from a, from a solder spill on me. You know, a few years ago, and uh, I learned my lesson now. <laughs> One PMI. Yeah. So we'll we'll. I think we have rather than press the group. We'll 
because uh, we put everybody on the spot. Defer the election to the, to the next meeting. Yeah, we'll, we'll, at least if we get a few, we're at least headed in the right direction. And then we'll squeeze Barry maybe for another presentation. And then we'll have an outside, we'll have an outside speaker or something. So we'll, we'll get that going. And let's talk about the conflict in February. Do you have okay. outline that? Yeah. So, um, next, the, well, this, this month is because we have, um, what is winter field day is next next week mm -hmm. okay so that's the next upcoming event so why don't you talk about winter field day first because that's the, the winter stage. field day is going to be at Stephen f austin state park it is saturday and sunday next weekend yeah, so the the rules are very much the same as our regular field day just a different sponsoring organization it is the winter field day group that sponsors it how about that uh now, Stephen is uh, getting himself a shelter out of Stephen F. Austin State Park for Saturday and Sunday. It's going to be bring your own meals. If you want to camp out, let Stephen know so he can coordinate with you. There will not be room in the shelter. So you'll have to get in your own shelter or get a campsite. Bring whatever radio gear you feel like you can for the weekend. Drop-ins for just a day or a couple hours are, are welcome. Anything else, Stephen? That, that's pretty much it, guys. So winter field day is uh, just like field day, like, like uh, Ralph was saying, except that it happens in January. So I'll, I'll be there as well. Um, I'm, I probably am going to go out Friday night and stay the weekend. So uh, I'll yeah. bring some cooking gear, uh, but if people want to cook on my, on my stove top and pants, they can feel free to do so. Hey, thanks, Jeremy. So, so right, so, so for winter field day, we're not going to go to Brasso's Bend State Park. Uh, we're going to go to Stephen F. Austin State Park. They've got shelters, they've got cabins, they've got campgrounds, campsites, and the day use area. So it's a nice setup. So I've gone ahead and. Our come out. Spots. Sorry? Do they have our, our spots? I believe they do. They do. Oh, okay. Believe they do. Okay. Yeah, really nice. nice. Yeah, so Robert, it's been there. I, Is that a county or a state park? It's a state, state. park. State. So Texas State Parks are great and they're. they're the one over here is really nice. Um, so the thing with that one is going to be, I got the uh, the shelter. I think it's shelter number twelve. Anyway, I've got the the, the pass already printed out. So it's going to be for Friday night and Saturday night. Reason being that you get a better rate if you pay for two. So I did. And we have to check out by Sunday at noon. Winter field day starts at, on Saturday at thirteen hundred and goes until Sunday at thirteen hundred. So then. It goes all night and so on. So the idea being that we can set up definitely on Saturday morning, get our radios or antennas st strung out, and uh, and then operate when when the when one o'clock comes around, one one p.m. Having said that, there's some folks. Jeremy's already confirmed. Uh, Christy is going to be there, and uh, my two sons are going to be there, and myself. So that's what we've got for Saturday night for sure. There's been some talk about actually camping out on Friday night since we've got the shelter for Friday night. Uh, but either way, as far as food, there's gonna be dinner on uh, Saturday and breakfast on Sunday. And taquitos and burgers and uh, Jeremy's contributing his, uh, he's bringing in his uh, cast iron skillets and things like that. It was a Dutch oven, I think it was Jeremy that brought it last uh, field day. So that's gonna be there. So you're more than welcome to come and join us. We should have enough space on the shelter site, not in the shelter, but right outside we'll put your tents. But if not, there's gonna be camp, camp sites available right down the, the street, so it's not, not long at all, not that bad at all. Yeah, uh, the campsite, I was there, I was at Stephen Up Austin last weekend, and the campsites are within putting distance of shelters. So if you get a campsite, you know, you can just walk over and be there in like a minute. Right. And the other thing though, Jeremy, I don't know if you noticed, but the bathroom, the campsites, and the shelters are sort of in line. So if you get the campsites, you're closer to the bathrooms and they've got you know, very nice accommodations there. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. You can definitely drop by as a, a day, you know, a, a, a day person. So we just drop by, operate. We're gonna have extra operators there. So we'll be using the club call sign, but you'll be able to use the entire uh, frequency band spectrum so yeah drop by and, and see some other rigs there's going to be other rigs there you know different you know the Shigo G9 is going to be there and other rigs so 
get, get exposure to rig you might be wondering about. Antennas, uh, definitely verticals, and I'm gonna be trying a, a, a wire antenna, which is an NFED halfway, which you're reading a lot about and very popular now. Yeah. So yeah, bring your antennas, we'll, we'll string them up. Do you have uh, the uh, band? Uh... Oh, the isolator, the filter. Band pass filter. Maybe. Do we? He's our bandpass filter guy. I have that. 20, 40, and 80 meter bandpass filters. It, uh, so if I make it out, you'll have them available. Either that or I'll have to drive by up. your house <laughs> to pick them up because yeah. we need those. So just uh, for guys that haven't been there, just this is queued up on the map here. That's kind of where it is. And this is from where we are right here roughly down to Seely is 42 miles, so it's not all that far really. And then um, for you guys that are golfers, so there's a good golf course at Stephen F. Austin there that I've played many, many years ago. So Al, maybe we want to yeah. do a little load, load up a couple of golf clubs, literally. So the, the other thing, if you're a, if you can zoom in there right quick, if you're a Texas history buff. There's something of interest. Well, this entire area has got historical interest for the state, but there's a Stephen F. Austin historic site over in the lower right-hand corner. It's separate from the park, oh, right. but it's a cabin or some complex over there with some historical significance for the state. So stop by there, make a, make a trip to that, and then yeah. stop by our, our radio um, yeah. shack. That's a nice park. It is. It's not huge. But it's it's very well maintained. The trip, if you want to go do hiking, definitely. So again, you can do a day trip, you know, and, and then just operate. And there, there we are. There it is. Gotta love Google. No, you don't. <laughs> so what else? What else about Winterfield? I think that's it. I think that's it. What happens if the weather's bad? We still go. Okay. It's rain or shine. Yeah. Mark, we need to bring our list in for next month for, yeah. for voting. Yes. Yeah, the idea for both field days is to make sure that no matter what Mother Nature throws at us, we can communicate. The, the only caveat to that is if we have some really weird event. Nothing is forecast a week <coughs> out, but if, for example, we have flooding or something like that, yeah. you know, I'm already in touch with emails to everybody <coughs> that's going. And I will send it to the reflector saying, okay, something totally unforeseen has come up, or we're, we're canceling it. Severe freeze or, or flooding rain? Yeah. Nah. Yeah, if it's going to endanger anybody going out there, of course, but so far it looks good. Yeah. What's that? That park definitely floods. Oh, does it? Okay. Yeah, the lower part of the, the lower part of the park yeah, floods because it's right by the river. Yeah. So yeah, far, so in this area, it's all problem. rough. It can flood right. 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 on the north part. Uh, it's, so it's pretty high. Over, over so, so the question came up. The question yeah. came up. What do we do for power? We're going to be trying to operate a standalone sort of like an emergency preparedness type of outfit. So we're going to be taking batteries, and uh, that's it. So charge up your bio ions yeah, or whatever right. you're taking. Sure. Have your spare batteries out there. Yeah. If I go out, I'll use solar panels and battery back up. That's the other thing. We will have solar panels if you go up, and I will definitely take one with a charge controller. So during the day, we, if we have sun, we'll be able to charge up our batteries and then operate into the night until it runs out. But yeah, emergency preparedness. I mean, bring your stuff and just. Remember, if you run off your uh, vehicle battery, you need to have the vehicle running for part of that time. Because you will draw down your battery and you can't go home. Yeah, I've not done that, but I know people who have. <laughs> a friend of a friend. Huh? Yep. So if you got a Jackery or some other thing there, but um, are you going to be there? I hope to. Okay. So do you have a, a solar? You have hit your solar operation, and uh, if Dom makes it, he's got his. Mm -hmm. So but yeah, like ho hopefully Dom battery. can make it. I haven't heard. That he is. Is there a um, is there a is there hard power there anywhere? Yes. Okay. In the shelter. Okay. And the shelter is going to be. I mean, like what we did for for field day. The shelter was there. We put our coolers in there, as, as, and we had it as a backup in yeah. case the weather got really ugly, which it did. Same situation here. Okay. That's all right. That's good. Um, 
next weekend. Okay, that takes care yes. of winter field. Well, my wife calls it this weekend, so I get confused. <laughs> it's the 28th and 29th. Yeah, five days. In five days. Well, no, seven days. A week days. from today. A week from today. <laughs> I trust you implicitly, Anthony. You're throwing me a. Okay, curveball. yeah. So okay. that was the re reason for the switch in the meeting. So next week, uh, next month, though, um, the because Orange is the fourth set, Orange Ham Fest is the fourth Saturday, um, and a bunch of us will typically go to Orange. So we tried to switch the meeting, but Transtar is busy that um, that day. And so uh, what I've asked uh, the guys at Echo um, if we can use the Red Cross building for that Saturday, if Mike um, W5OFT is around, or Dave uh, Underwood, uh, who's not, not a member but owes me a favor, we'll be we'll try to get into the Red Cross um, on the third Saturday next of, of February. So, um, so that's the plan. So I will get that firmed up and then. Um, send that notice out because I have to switch testing also for that day. Um, the one advantage of the Red Cross is that if Mike is there, you know, we can go into the radio room presumably and uh, work, to work the radios that are there. And then we do have actually, I, I need to actually work on the tower. What So that would be a good opportunity for me to um, fix the antenna um, up on the roof, and then get everybody can run HF there uh, when we're when we're there. Is that with, is that accurate, Mike? Oh, we can run HF on. The oh, on the antennas. on the loops. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The beam is the problem. I think you need to replace the balance. Right. Okay. So now, is there any is there any realistic possibility that we will not be able to use Red Cross building on the third Saturday? There is always some possibility that I might be offshore, but I shouldn't be. But Dave for Underwood, I'm sure can go. Or okay. I'll get I, if if I'm going to go offshore, I will give Mark my badge. Oh, okay. 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 That's okay. Right. So you know, okay, we can be there. That's not fun. So Kirby, is that yeah, the Red Cross is right off of Kirby and 59. Uh, if you're heading north on 59, take your Kirby, make a U-turn. Yeah. It's over there by the oh, Audi dealership. Yeah, here it is. What's so that, sir? Is, I thought they wiped it off the face of the earth. It must have been no. the next door. No, <laughs> yeah. no, there it is there. Right so here's the here's the Red Cross right there. So Hey Mark. Now, well, that's only if Dave is cooperative. But um, yeah, so yeah, the, so the red, so that's where the Red Cross is down to Fifty Nine Kirby, and it's pretty easy to get to. Parking's you mm -hmm. know, easy. Good parking in front. But it's a uh, and a, the, the surface parking. The radio room is in the back building, and Mike is the controller of the radio room in there. Is, is that Mexican restaurant across the street open in the morning? Uh, or should probably. We need to is good company open. For, yeah, for Nico's, breakfast. Nico's uh, restaurant is open for breakfast. Yeah. Okay. We can we can find out what the breakfast situation will be there. But anyway, just wanted to. I was waiting for this meeting uh, up until just last week, I guess. So um, that, that so that looks like it'll work out, and then we'll you know like I said we'll we'll try to queue up the radios in there and get everything so that uh, guys can get on the air. Uh, so All right. except for except for me and Mike, I, I don't think anyone here really knows him. It's okay to mention it though. That's all of the business that uh, I had on my list. Anybody else have other business for today before we move on to our presentation? Boothway Island de-expedition is on now. And uh, they, that is the like, second most uh, sought after uh, contact entity that's, that's out there. And um, the They'll be running from the for 20 days from the end, 
from the beginning of February into the middle of February. And um, I just wanted to sh kind of show everybody where this is because it's, it's, a, it's a big deal. And um, the, uh, there's gonna be some stations here that are gonna be trying to contact them on FT8 from the Texas City Dyke. And so, and the, the, this is guys at the Echo Society, uh, Peyton Barnes and Bill Hardy, they've been playing with this for some time with Whisper and um, FT8. And so, uh, the, if you go to the website, um, you can kind of see what the you know what the buzz is on all of this, but the green line here is the trajectory of the short path signal from Houston to Bouvier Island, which is way the hell out on the South Atlantic here. Jesus. And basically, there's nothing out here but a bunch of penguins and ice. So, that's, so are they going to be running FT8 in contest mode? Is that they're, what they're doing? They're going to be running it in straight in, in straight contact mode. It will not be in contest mode. So it'll be just like a regular FT8. Just like a regular FT8, and they're going to be trying. They're going to be running low power. You know, they're going to be trying to get the low power stations in because it's, because it's just a, the, the circumstances there. It's d difficult to um, to to make those contacts anyway, and so they want to have the guys that have low power small stations have the ability to make those contacts. There's no street view on that island, is there? There there's is no, streets no on the street island. view on the island. <laughs> Probably no streets. <laughs> yeah, there's no streets on this island. So when is this? So so this is going to be. Okay. <laughs> so this is the this is the website for for it. The um, three Y zero three Y O J is the uh, website. Is there a way we can this, share this on the Zoom meeting for the Zoom people? Pardon? Can you share can you that share on Zoom? I can't. I can't share it. But it's it's three Y O J is uh, the uh, contact you know, for the website and it shows the project and you know, what fans are on, all about how they're getting there, um, all the rest of this stuff. It's so pretty it's, sophisticated setup. They're, they're actually in a sailing craft going from the Falkland Islands to Bouvoy Island. So that first site you had, it said arriving there on the 12th? Right. So they're already there? No, no, they're, they're, they're in Port, they were in Port Stanley on the 12th. Okay. <coughs> That's and they are course. they are sailing from the Falkland Islands to Bouvoy Island, which is which is here, and this is their position as of this morning. <clears throat> yeah, in the middle of the hey, South Atlantic. Mark, since you're keeping up with this, uh, can you send something to the reflector whenever yeah. they're they're on or a idea. day before? Yeah, we'll set we'll 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 set it off set it off there. And so what I have up for the guys on the zoom call is just a map of the south atlantic with the position of the ship which is about 200 miles from south georgia island is it a 40 really foot boat middle of so nowhere what 140 foot boat, boat? So it's a 100 foot sail oh, oh, yeah it's a 100 foot sail that's uh, a real boat yeah it's that's a real, real boat. boat so but they're they're not they're they're got you know 10 miles an hour in the middle of the south atlantic it's pretty um you know, it's pretty, it's pretty rough out there. It'll take a few days. Yeah. And then um, the water, the, when you, if the other thing that's kind of interesting to look at with this, uh, which I'll just queue up here real quick, is kind of what the weather, so there's a lot of the stuff that goes along with the <clears throat> weather here. And uh, so on this website, the windy website, you can uh, get the, um, weather, uh, you know, basically satellite weather and everything across the, across the world here. So, you know, you're talking 20, 15, 20 knot winds uh, in the middle of the South Atlantic. Uh, it's pretty rough. So that's a power sail boat. It is powered, but they're sailing. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah, at 100 foot, they gotta have power. Yeah. In there. And the winds are going contrary to what they need right now. Yeah, the wind, yeah, the it's pretty- A little further, it'll take them the right way. Yeah. One thing uh, that's also good about um, this particular site, when we, if you're just trying to figure out what it's like down in the South Atlantic, is um, 
there are webcams or weather cams out in in this area, and so the, so this is what it's looking like right now. So it's pretty calm in in South Georgia, but you can see that it gets pretty crappy quite quickly. And uh, some are there now, so it's uh, it can be pretty nasty. This is this area here is a protected cove, so. Um, it, it doesn't get the brunt of the weather. But having been here myself, the waves can be, you know, 15 feet high when the, when the wind is blowing. So, so there's a bunch of stuff to, even if you're not making the contact, there's a bunch of stuff to uh, look at. And then there's actually a ship, there's a couple of ships that are um, running in this area that you can get the uh, 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 real time, uh, uh, views. So if you haven't looked at this website, just in general, it's kind of cool. You is your presentation from last year about this on on our website? It, I don't know if it is or not. Hey Mark, can you post this website on the reflector also? Yeah. But yeah, the Boveway Island one, the 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 um, the Google Earth uh, track here. That's my custom track that I have manually entered in here off of the website. And then a couple of the links, but I can post actually the the Google Earth push pin that has all that information on there, so you can kind of play. Or you can just take a picture of it and post it every couple of days. What, what are your what are you estimating? How much are they making per day from the various stops? Well, they're ma they're nine miles an hour. So, however, and this is uh, let's see, um, that's the completed track. And then that's 2,490 miles between where the there and where between where they are. About now. 11 days. Let's see. Yeah, it's about 10 days. So they still have 1,800 miles to go. Okay. Cool. Yeah, it's it, it's pretty cool. And then once they're done, they'll head over to Cape Town because because the, the prevailing winds are uh, uh, going east in this area. And then um, the other thing in this particular set of files, um, it has all of the major uh, Antarctic stations on it and some of these other entities way out here that, for, that are remote contacts. Um, the guys, acknowledges the boondocks. Yeah, no, really. It's the middle, literally the end of the earth here. So are they, they, are they setting, they're setting up a repeater basically, right? Like you, you try to get? No. no. No, it's to actually operating. Operate. Yeah, there's ten guys going to be there operating all. But they're, they're not also going to set a beacon. There's no, there's no beacons. Yeah, they'll they'll be on 24 hours a day. So the two guys that are going to be doing this are going to be doing it. The, I think the last weekend in January or whenever those guys arrive, they're setting up from the Texas City Dyke with a F, with a low power uh, FT8 and sideband, and they're going to try to make this this contact here, um, first starting with FTA, and then depending on the propagation, you know, maybe, maybe sideband, but I think it's gonna be uh, tr uh, troublesome. The but reason they're going to Texas City Dyke is yeah. to get as close as they can to salt water. You get a real good ground plane that way, get a good bounce, and it's pointing out the right direction. Yeah, the, the only flaw in that is that you have to cross uh, across South America to uh, to get that, and um, but you do have transequatorial propagation here, and the bands have been open mm -hmm. to the to uh, South America regularly, um, the 20 meters, you know, 10 20, meters too. 20, yeah, 20 and 10. Uh, so the propagation could work very well here. But so FT8 is FT8. I mean. You can give it a try on FT8 regardless of where you're at. That's right. Yeah. You don't have to go to the Texas Dyke. Monitoring FT8 uh, for the past couple of weeks, I'm seeing Madeira Island. Yeah. I'm seeing Uruguay, lots of Brazil. Yeah. Uh, well, it's, uh, I saw Fiji one day. Yeah. So there so you go. We got worldwide 10 meter in the morning right now and in the afternoon. Um, yeah, it looks so like. So I know you guys have seen this before, so just to remind you, let's see if we'll queue up. Let's 
see what's going on. We're a little slow on the connection today here. Okay. So this is this is 10 meters, 10 meter propagation right now, um, which isn't all that. It's good. It's good to Europe. It's a little early, but um, let's see what. Um, yeah, from noon on, it'll turn south. Yeah. So let's see what 20 is doing. Yeah, it's not quite. Not yeah, it's the band's not not quite open yet. But with this, they'll they'll be able. To, so yeah, here's here's the you have some propagation to South America right now, but it's mostly to Europe because it's still early. But with this website and some of the other spotter, spotting websites, you know, if there's something going on that's going to reach the south of the south of yeah, two o'clock yesterday afternoon, there were so many traces for FT8, 10 meters that I could not see South America map underneath it. There's so many traces that were just covered up. Yeah. So you're going to be, they'll be running into this cell here, I think, in an ID uh, grid, grid square. So I imagine that, that there'll be plenty of ways to figure out what's going on. It'll be a challenge. Yeah. Are they doing any transmitting while they're on the route? Not no. that I am aware of. Okay. They typically don't. Yeah, they're not. They're just trying to get rested up. Um, uh, I've been asking around, and I, there's a comet, C2022E3, that has a 50,000-year orbit that it's going to be, it's going, it's visible now by Set by uh, telescopes and such, but they say it will make its closest approach to Earth on Wednesday, February 1st. It's a circumpolar, uh, uh, as seen from Houston, it never sets. It, it's very close to the, to the North Pole, uh, but it does, uh, let's see, around uh, midnight, it gets very close to the, to the northern horizon. It's tough to see. You need to get to where you're not looking through all the gunk and, and the light pollution of Houston. Uh, it says coming around the sun, it's going to get brighter because of the effect of the sun on it. That's so, right, and the fact that it'll be making the closest approach to Earth at around the same time. Right. So uh, out around city would be good. February, February 1st, it says, is our optimum here. It'll we'll be something next week. Yeah, that's why mm -hmm. I wanted to bring it up in here just to make an FYI. All right. If and you bounce if, a signal if, off if anybody of it, wants to try to bounce a signal off of it, go for it. Yeah. <laughs> Just need a few <coughs> megawatts and a big uh, dish, you know. Yeah. So, okay. Well, with that, let's let Anthony get right. up here. Come on, Anthony. Anthony. Time to Q and a little long. Uh, my name is Anthony. I met some of you guys at breakfast. Some of you guys I've met over the years in ham radio. My call sign is Kilo Echo Five Golf India Papa. I got my technician license in 2005. That's cool. You so, sabotaged the uh, mark. Re pull, pull the cable out of it and uh, let it resync. <laughs> yeah, we'll restart the computer. Uh, and that board looks bad. Plug it in. Idiot. Let that see if that wakes up. There we go. Let's go. <coughs> um, <coughs> I got my technician license in 2005. I subsequently upgraded to a general and then eventually to extra. Um, I am currently the president of the Southeast Texas Amateur Club. Uh, it was through our club website that we got the request from a scout leader to introduce <coughs> AM radio to Boy Scouts. Um, everybody in here familiar with Jamboree on the air? All right, I see a bunch of heads shaking, so we're good there. Um, Jamboree on the internet is kind of the new age edition of it, where they added the internet into the mix to connect scouts all across the world. Um, we did not do any of the JOTI portion of it. All of ours was on the air, HF, VHF. Um, if you don't know much about Jamboree on the air, um, every year this happens in October and they get approximately 2 million scouts involved in this process across the globe 172 countries the request I got from the scout leader was to introduce ham radio 
to approximately 45 scouts. Uh, we made the determination that it would be easier to take the equipment to the scouts than to bring the scouts to one of our radio rooms. Uh, if you can imagine having 45 scouts try to file through your radio room, that might be a bit much. Um, they were camping at Brazos Bend State Park. Um, so we reached out to uh, BVARC, had some conversations with BVARC. Uh, we had two of their guys that at less than 48 hours until the start of the event jumped in with both feet showed up with equipment, bandpass filters, antennas, radios, laptops. These guys built an entire station with literally less than 48 hours of notice. Brazos Bend State Park is just under 5,000 acres. If you don't know where it is, it's off to the southwest, uh, not far from where the ham fest is gonna be from what I understand. We ended up in an area that is a day use area. It's got a few picnic tables, not much more, a few trees. Um, it was within walking distance of the campsite where the scouts were at. So that's why we chose that. It also gave us enough open space to string wire antennas or vertical antennas. Um, there was no, no electricity available to us on site. So we ran the entire day on batteries. Logistics, personnel. Prior to showing up that morning, I hadn't been to Brazos Bend State Park in probably 20 years. So I had no idea what I was going to find. So I brought a truck full of equipment, tables, chairs, etc. cetera. Um, the guys from BVARC, I found out later, were out there on a monthly basis doing photo activations. So they were a little more prepared than I was. But you can see here a basic list of the things that we had to bring out. I want to make note of the caution tape. That's important to have. Huh. Does anybody know why caution tape? Is that for lines and things? Close. What, uh, what is an antenna? It's an electrical conductor for high voltage electricity. The last thing you want is someone touching the antenna when someone pushes the PTT button. We use caution tape to mark off our antennas as well as antenna feed lines just to keep the scouts out of that space. Uh, portable antennas, portable power, hydration. Uh, I brought an entire ice chest full of water and Gatorade that day. Um, we did not do lunch that day. In hindsight, I probably should have planned something. Um, we arrived at the site at about eight o'clock in the morning. I don't think I left the site until almost 4 p.m. So it was an entire day. As you can see here in the personnel section, we had operators from SeaTac, operators from BVARC, and one gentleman that I don't even remember his name nor which club he came from. He heard us talking about it on the air and said, I'll show up and help. The results. We had a presentation station. Basically, I had a bunch of poster boards. I had some FRS radios. I did questions and answers. I was the first stop when the scouts came to us. Gave them a basic overview of radio. Um, including non-amateur radio. I touched on FRS, I touched on GMRS, um, even touched on cell phone. This is all wireless technology. As you can imagine, um, most of them were young teenagers, so they were very familiar with cell phones, very familiar with Wi-Fi, so it was a good starting point. After the presentation station, uh, we had two different stations where we had radios set up. One was a single antenna, single radio station. The other one was a single antenna using bandpass filters. They had four radios and laptops. 
They were monitoring multiple bands on single sideband and had laptops for doing digital. So the scouts got a very big introduction into the capabilities of ham radio. Um, we handed out a couple of FRS radios that the scouts were able to use for the entire day. A couple of those scouts managed to figure out the maximum distance they could get inside the park with the given terrain on FRS radios. So it was a good learning tool for the scouts because they didn't have to have supervision to use those radios. They could take it, use it, experiment with it, bring it back to us at the end of the day. Ideas for the future. Um, if we had spread out our stations more, we could have done simplex operation between our stations, guaranteeing over the air contact. As is, we were relying on either repeater contact, which didn't work out well for us because the BVARC repeater was in use for another event, or HF which if you've ever tried to spontaneously have conversations on HF, you know that can be hit or miss. Um, having prearranged contacts, um, hopefully this next year around, we can get multiple scout groups and radio groups and, and have prearranged contacts, either over a local repeater or even simplex. Um, with a good antenna at 40 or 50 feet, you can make simplex contacts over 30, 40 miles without much trouble. Um, the presentation station, uh, questions and answers and presentation of, of general radio theory, really I needed a script because I didn't do any two of the presentations that day the same but a basic script so that I don't miss any of the talking points would have helped. Um, an additional table or two, we ran out of folding tables that day, um, and an additional operator doing Q&A would have been useful. Yes, sir? Did you guys do any CW while we were there to talk about it? We did not do any of it. We did discuss it. Um, I don't know that we had any CW operators on hand that day. Um, there is on the Joda website suggestions about mixing um, radio communication with land navigation. So basically as the scouts get to each relay point, they are radioed to the next set of coordinates that they have to move to. So it mixes different skills together. It ties in with their orienteering requirements. It does. Um, Another suggestion is radio direction finding, fox hunting. Um, I had a radio fox with me that day, but we did not really have the right types of antennas for doing directional finding. Um, regional organization of this in the future is what I would like to see. Um, I would like to see multiple radio groups, multiple scout groups, um, you know, with a, with a city the size of Houston and the number of repeaters we have, there's no reason that we can't really show this off. Um, how do we get there? Coordination. Um, some of you may or may not be familiar with a inter-club coordination group that's gotten started called uh, Houston Area Radio Club. It is basically an organization that has liaisons to each of the area clubs. And the purpose of it is cross club coordination for big events. Um, involving the scouting organization, uh, I'm going to be reaching out to the Boy Scout Area Council, which covers most of the Houston Galveston region. And I'm gonna to try to work from the top down within their organization to organize this. I already said it, 45 scouts, got a basic introduction. 
their leader, their scout leader, was highly impressed that we were able to throw all this together. And he was even more impressed when he realized that with the exception of uh, myself and the other group, we had not met each other at all until we walked up that day. The guys from Bvark I had never met. I talked to them on the radio once. So, questions, comments, ideas? Uh, the people that, the, the merit badge for, for uh, radio, how many meet gatherings would uh, scouts have to do? And could this be the culmination where they finish their badges at the event? There are two radio merit badge classes planned for this year, one in February, one in April. And uh, I'm working with BVARC, they've got a couple of folks, and then me, possibly Jeremy, if he's available, uh, we're going to work with merit badge fairs. And so far we have 11 scouts signed up for each time to earn the badge. Uh, we're, uh, I'm still working with BVARC to figure out exactly what we're going to do at the end of it. In other words, you know, for Joda, would that could that be an event where they fulfill their uh, radio badge at, at Joda? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It could be done in one day. Uh, that would be my suggestion: is that not only encouraging people coming, but that if, I didn't know if you had to have other meetings before the event in order to get the badge, or if that could have accomplished in a day. Don't know. I don't know. Uh, it takes, uh, you can push it and do the badge in four hours, six hours is better. And we're planning on six hours uh, for each of those uh, merit badge days. Um, and we'll be able to complete the whole badge and we'll have a small station set up each day so they can complete their on the air contacts that are required. All right. And we'll be putting this out to heart once we've got a little firmer plan. Awesome. Uh, what I'd like to offer you, sir, I have some notes that I've used over the years uh, to explain radio to Cub Scouts or over to the Museum of Natural Science when they have school trips. I'll send you the, all those notes. Absolutely. One of them includes a, 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 a teaser. Is it radio or not? They almost always miss two of them, microwave and cell phones. Now those aren't radios. Yeah, they are. <laughs> but also I've got one that's the skills you learn in amateur radio are help you in all of these careers. I've got a lot of them listed, so I'll send you that too. Excellent, excellent. I got a suggestion. Aim high. I mean, yeah. it's it's great for for Cub Scouts what what Ralph is doing. That they need to know that obviously. But for Scouts, especially if you're talking about live or even Eagle, you know, when they're going for that, have them get their license. Absolutely. Get them to get their license. I mean. It's not optional. If you want to get to that level, you should have your license or get it. Absolutely. And uh, I know there's several clubs in the area that do classes for technician. Yeah. Uh, I've even heard of a general class license. So I know that exists. Uh, you had a question, sir. Well, I'll comment. Um, a company called Rig Expert, they build um, antenna testers. Stuff like that. Make a little trinket keychain that uh, signs out Morse code. It's just a history of story. But they always throw two or three of them in every order. Right here. Might be worth contacting them and seeing uh, if you can get something like that for the Cub Scouts or the Boy Scouts. Okay. That's something. A, to take on with them, and B, to uh, kind of play around with them and get familiar with them. Not a bad idea. I've got a version for Cub Scouts, and I've got a version for the older boys. Uh, practice oscillators. And uh, the it's a it's a 50 cent buzzer, a 9 volt battery, and, a, and an extra large uh, paper clip for a key for the, for the Cub Scouts. Just have them put that together with little screws into a piece of wood for the joints. And, and then a, a pocket size uh, code, code cards. And then I've got an actual circuit for, for the older boys where they need to solder together. But I'll, I'll send you those too. In fact, I'll send it out to, to everybody in, in heart. 
Okay, sounds good. Um, I know within SeaTac we have one member who has telegraph sounders. Ah. Uh. So we can actually create a wired telegraph within a room for demonstration purposes. That's great. I'm sorry. Excellent. Some of these guys are telling me when they're working the, the CW booth at places that the kids would they, they, they would have them key out their you said it they yeah. would key out their yeah, tell them their story. Yeah, this was at uh, the, the Galveston. The the Take it on the strand, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, me and Don went there down there. It was in 2019, and uh, we had our table set up and so forth with all these sounders on there. And you know the, the adults and the kids would walk up, and uh, and they would hand them this card with a mar Morse code on it, so they could just look up, you know, what the pattern was for the dots and the dashes for each of the letters. And I would challenge each of the kids to uh, to key out their 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 name on one of the one of the keyers, and uh, and I and I would say, well, I could see if I could figure out what your name was from from your code. And I'm not an expert at Morse code, but I can identify most of the letters. And uh, but yeah, the, the kids really enjoyed that. They would, you know, they'd be really slow, and the, sometimes you couldn't tell the difference between a dot and a dash. But you know, it would kind of struggle through it. But the kids really enjoyed that to be able to send their name and then have someone interpret what they were sending. Yes. And what happened when y'all demonstrated SOS? Oh, um, I don't know. People came out of the woodwork and wanted to know if we ha if we needed help. <laughs> SOS is probably one of the most familiar Morse code strings ever. Right. All right. Any other questions, comments for me about Joda? You have any pictures of the, uh, of the setup? I do not. Uh, I was busy doing the event that day and did not take any photos. <laughs> so that's my fault. Hopefully next time around we'll have somebody dedicated to taking photos. Comment. Appreciate what you're doing. You're doing yes. all the good work. You're making a difference. Thanks. Here's my contact info if anybody wants it. You are now on our webpage permanently. <laughs> and evidently on the internet. And on the internet. Um, Wave to YouTube. <laughs> as an extra, some of the guys were at breakfast were talking about portable stations. I have a backpack portable station that I brought in at the conclusion of the meeting if you guys want to dig through that and see what I got. That's okay, cool. absolutely. That, that's the end of our formal pre, uh, our formal meeting right there. It uh, Now it's all Q&A and, and uh, uh, Reg Chu. All right. Hands on. So thank you very much, sir. Yep. Yes, thank sir. You. Thank you for coming. Formal meetings adjourned, guys. Thank you. 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 Thank you.